In 1939, Germany invaded Poland. This was the start of World War II. Gustav Rau was one of the best horsemen of the time and thus became Hitler's chief equerry of Germany and master of the horse. He was put in charge of reorganizing the Polish horse breeding industry. He saw this as an opportunity to breed the perfect horse. He made it his goal to create a perfect military horse for the Germans. Meanwhile, in Austria, the Spanish Riding School, famed for its high-level dressage and beautiful white Lipizzaners, was on the brink of destruction. The Lipizzaner horse dates back to 1580. The horses were bred very carefully and were highly sought after for tournaments and war. In Austria, they were seen as a crown jewel. The Austrians took much pride in their care and presentation of the horses. The Riding School itself officially opened in 1735, but has been standing for over 400 years. It is the oldest riding school that teaches haute école, the highest form of classical dressage. The original riding ring was wooden, but the white riding hall we know today was built later in 1729 before the school's official opening. The issue was the school was no longer receiving new stallions for training as the breeding farm in Piper had been taken over by Rao and was now breeding horses for the German army. Many of the riders had also been drafted into the army, leaving very few people behind to tend to the horses. Alois Podeski, head of the Spanish Riding School at the time, decided to flee from Vienna and move his horses to St. Martin. Alois had also received news that the mares from the Lipizzaner breeding farm in Piper, along with many other prized horses, were being moved to a farm in Hostau. Podeski was heartbroken, but there was nothing he could do about it. After they left, the school was left almost in ruins. A large majority of it was looted and the other destroyed by air raids. If Alois had stayed in Vienna, he and the stallions would have perished. Gustav Rau successfully moved all his horses to a farm in Hostau, which is in today's Czech Republic, in 1942. He had gathered Arabians from Poland, Lipizzaners from Austria, Italy, and Yugoslavia, and thoroughbreds to create the perfect military horse for the German cavalry. Rau was not a Nazi himself, but did see an opportunity to create his perfect equine. He placed Hubert Rudowski as director of the stud farm and Rudolf Lessing as veterinarian to look after the horses. The stud farm was thriving for around three years. Then disaster struck. The Soviets were headed toward the stud farm. The Soviet Union would slaughter anything in their path. Their troops were starving and they would eat anything they would find. With this knowledge, the stud farm was left with two choices. Keep the horses in hostile and watch the Russians slaughter them for food, or surrender to the Americans which would be treason. While Hubert Rudowski is contemplating the horse's fate, the Americans are surprised to find an officer of the German Luftwaffe approaching their headquarters. Colonel Walter Holters arrived at the 2nd Cavalry Headquarters on April 26. After demanding to see the commanding officer, Captain Ferdinand Spurl, a prisoner of war interrogator, had the officer escorted to his tent for interrogation. During interrogation, the colonel's wallet was confiscated and looked through for any details. The only thing inside was a picture depicting two magnificent white horses. Shocked, Sprawl demanded to know why Colonel Holters had that picture, and after many tries, the officer spilled. He explained how the Germans had the Royal Lipizzaner horses kept at farm in Hostau and his concern for the horses with the approaching Soviets. Sprawl took this information to Hank Reed, his commanding officer. Reed, being a passionate horseman, decided the horses should be saved. Terms were arranged and thus made the intelligence group surrender themselves and their documents. Reed promised they would be transported, not as prisoners of war, to the European Theater Operations Headquarters and then if all went to plan, the horses would be saved. Once terms were met, Holters wrote a letter to Rudowski mentioning a way to save the horses and how to contact him. After much debating, Rudowski sent Rudolf Lessing, the stud farm's vet, to meet Colonel Holters at the forester's house, also mentioned in the letter. Setting out on his trusted thoroughbred Indigo alongside a groom, they began their ride into the forest. Once arrived, Lessing found that Holters was not there. The forester offered his motorcycle to the veterinarian and his groom. After traveling for hours, the American army eventually blocked his path. Reed sent a message to General George S. Patton requesting permission for a rescue operation. Patton replied that Reed had permission to get them, but to make it quick. When Lessing returned to Hostau, he took an American with him, Tom Stewart. They arrived in Hostau on April 28th. 
In just two short days, Hitler would commit suicide. Tom Stewart was sent to negotiate a surrender with the Germans. There were still Nazis occupying the area which made it this quite difficult. The Germans were very proud and not all of them would want to give up so easily. Fortunately, Stewart was able to get the Germans to surrender. On May 9th, Reed received news that General Patton had been in contact with Alois Podeski. Podeski was soon flown out to the farm to inspect the Lippis honors. On May 12th, around 200 of the 1,200 horses were trucked, ridden, and herded to Konstantz, Germany. These horses would be boarded onto a ship and arrive in the U.S. As the horses passed through the northern Atlantic, a strong storm crossed their path. The storm created huge waves that tossed the boat back and forth. The Stephen F. Austin nearly capsized with the horses on board. Horses were falling out of their stalls during the storm. The men on board were concerned that they would have to put the horses down if they started to fight. Almost as if knowing the danger, the horses remained calm, even as they were tossed from the safety of their stalls. All horses and men arrived safely in the U.S. I think that you have to look back at the history of the soldiers that were involved in the rescue. A significant number of the rescuers, all the way up to the ranks, were longtime cavalry soldiers. My dad, for example, joined the Army Cavalry at the age of 17 back in the 1920s when there were few tanks and horses were the primary source of combat mobility other than the infantry. For the cavalry soldier, the horses were their life from dawn to dusk. The horses were not pets, but were partners in the mission. The Royal Lipizzaner, once the Jewel of Austria, had finally returned home. Alois Podeski would remain head of the Spanish Riding School and would continue training and performing with the Lipizzaners. The Spanish Riding School still runs today. In 2008, they accepted their first female riders, breaking the 436-year-old gender barrier. The Lippas Honors travel the world today and President Reagan was even gifted one of the fine horses in the 80s. Without Operation Cowboy, the entire breed of Lippas Honors would have become extinct. One of the world's finest creatures would have been slaughtered to feed hungry soldiers. A breed the people had cherished for centuries would be gone and nothing could replace them. For other horses that made it to America, many of them would never see their home country again. They would be bought and sold at auctions across the country for breeding and recreational purposes. You can even trace some of today's finest horses back to those brought to the U.S. back in the 1940s. The horses that stayed in Europe had the same fate. While some were able to be returned home, many were sold as their homes were too dangerous. The story of these horses also provided hope to many people. A group of horses was able to make two sworn enemies stop fighting and cooperate, something that is not seen very often throughout history. This is especially important today. In today's world, there is a lot of hate based on race, sex, religion. It is inspiring to see that just finding one thing in common can help people get along. Each group of animals was highly valued by the countries that they were stolen from. On return of their animals, Poland regained a significant boost in its national pride and experienced a rebirth in the horse breeding programs which had been destroyed during the war, which was so vital to them. Of course, we can't forget the huge impact of the return of the Austrian Lipizzans to the Spanish Riding School. They too were a symbol of the national pride of the country of Austria and were significant in recreating a sense of normality to the war-torn country. The success of the rescue to this day is reflected in the awe and joy and admiration that visitors to the Spanish Riding School experience when viewing a performance of these national treasures. Thank you.